How incredible that day will be when the Lord returns. I cannot wait. Can you? Hello, my brothers and sisters. Hope you are doing well. Hope you are having a blessed day. And there was something that was just on my heart and on my mind where what an amazing day it's going to be when the Lord returns now. We know there's going to be some destruction uh, when he does come back. It is going to be uh, pretty, but um, for believers, I can't even imagine. Our minds cannot comprehend the absolute joy and happiness we're going to feel when we're with him and our bodies will be changed from uh, corruptible to incorruptible, the Bible says, and I just don't think we could, our brains could fathom uh, the joy and the uh, euphoric feeling we're going to have when we're with the Lord. And um, I know I'm looking forward to that day. I wish I knew the day. <laughs> but we know we don't know that day. Um, we know the signs are there. But we could be longer than we think, or we could be shorter than we think. We don't know. But we're going to read some scriptures here. And uh, just like we were just saying about not knowing. In Matthew 24, it's uh, Matthew 24, 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels in heaven, but my Father only. Just as we were talking about, that um, nobody knows the hour. Nobody knows the time, the day, and the second. Only the Father in heaven. Again, I wish I knew, but I'm not the Father in heaven. <laughs> um... It also says it repeats itself in Matthew twenty five thirteen. I didn't realize. Watch therefore, for ye neither neither the day nor the hour, when the, you neither you neither know the day neither, nor the hour, when the Son of Man cometh. Yeah, they repeat. You know, I didn't I didn't know it repeated itself back in tw Matthew twenty five. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Only God again. Only God knows. Again in Matthew 24, for as lightning come out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. That will be glorious in itself, the lightning that will come down from heaven and Jesus coming in the clouds. Can you imagine, we can't imagine the feeling, the glorious feeling that we're going to have when we're with the Lord. Just can't imagine. First Corinthians fifteen fifty two, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised, non corruptible, and we shall be changed. The dead in Christ shall rise first. The believers in Christ that are passed on before, his return shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall also be changed incorruptible. Like I said before. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. You know what a twinkling of an eye is? How fast? It's it's a split second. Not even. Even faster. It's even faster. Unbelievable. Can't wait. Hebrews 9.28 So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them, unto them, the look, the look for him shall be appear. Let's, re, let's restart. And unto then that the look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. When he does come back, we will be without sin. We will be changed. We will be incorruptible. Instead of a corrupted body, we will be incorruptible. So Christ was once offered to, to bear the sins of many. Now, he did bear the sins of the world. But the ones who accept him are the ones the Bible is talking about are many. And unto them... A look for him, shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. We are looking for his second appearance. Let's read, uh, I have to load this real quick. Let's read John uh, 6, 650 to 671. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man eat therefore, 
that a man may eat, therefore, and not die. I am the living bread, which came down from heaven. If any man eat this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Now, he didn't mean eat, literally eat his flesh. We're not cannibals. He meant to take him, to accept him. The Jews, therefore, strove among themselves, saying, How could this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, you have no life in you. You don't believe in Jesus Christ. He's telling you there is no life in you. There is no eternal life. Whosoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. The last day when he returns, they will be. Ra we just read that the devil will be raised incorruptible, and he will raise us up on the last day. The ones who are passed on. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father had sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is the bread which came down from heaven. Not as your father did eat manna, manna, are the dead, let's start again, and are the dead that he eateth of this bread shall live forever. These things he said in the synagogue, he taught them in Capernaum. Many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that the disciple murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? Does this offend you? What if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the spirit that quicketh, the flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. But there are some of you that believe it not, for Jesus knew that from the beginning who they were that believe it not, and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore I said unto you, that no man can come unto me except that were given unto him by my father. By that time many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will you also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life, and we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered him, Have not I chosen you twelve? And one of you is the devil. And spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. For he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. Jesus is saying right here, you know, when he does return, if you do not have him, you do not have eternal life. You do not have the bread of life. You have not accepted his body. You have not accepted his blood. So when he does return, you will not be taken up with him. Those who don't believe on him will not be taken up. Have you accepted the bread? Have you accepted his blood? Have you accepted him as your Savior? If not, you will not be there on the last day. Revelation eleven nineteen, And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his, of his testament, and there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and earthquakes and great hail. This will be the day of the Lord. That's why I said it will be a little devastating too, not just a... Uh, but those who are not taken up. The Bible says that dreadful day of the Lord, the terrible day of the Lord, when he returns, not for his believers. Let's read again. Let's read from Revelation again. Mm. Revelation 19, 12 to 16. His eyes were as a flame of fire. On his head were many crowns, and he had a name written, and no man knew but him, he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it should be smite the nations, that with it should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the, the fierceness, fierceness of wrath of Almighty God. And he attacked on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. To the fearness and wrath of Almighty God. So like I said, when he does return it, it's not going to be pretty. 
for those that don't believe. There is fierceness and wrath in Almighty God. Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords. Every knee shall bow when they see him. Every knee shall bow to him. Every knee. Uh, so these are just some scriptures, you know, concerning his return. And like I said, I look forward to that day. And I know many believers will look forward to that day. You know, it's, you know this, this is uh, something we cannot fathom. It's going to be a glorious day. It's going to be a day we've never seen before. And hold on, folks. And to be one of his sheep, to be one of his, that is a glorious day. Your corrupted body will turn incorruptible. It will be without sin. The Bible said we will be like him. Let's see if I could uh, conjure up some more uh, scripture here. Bear with me. Like I said, we don't uh, we don't edit stuff here. We just go with the flow, with the with the errors and all. <laughs> Man, how can we forget Revelation one seven? Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye shall see him, even those who have pierced him, and all of the tribes of the earth will will wail on account of him. Even so, Amen. Coming with clouds, we're going to see him come from the clouds, and every eye every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. The ones who crucified him, the ones who have turned their back on him, the ones who do not believe on him. Second Peter three ten, but the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done in it will be all will be exposed. Fervent heat, the Bible talks about when he returns. The elements will melt with fervent heat. That is heat that you could. Uh, you cannot think of here. There is no heat, even lava. Cannot compare to the fervent heat that uh, Jesus Christ is going to come back with. Uh, let's continue. Titus 2.13, a very famous uh, you know, scripture that a lot of people do know about, that even our, our Bible scholars or Bible readers, they've heard this, Titus 2.13. Waiting for a blessed hope and a great appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. A blessed hope. We pray and hope that it is today. We pray and hope that the Lord does take us out of here today. I know I do. And even John said at the end of the Bible, even so, come Lord Jesus. First Thessalonians 5 2. For you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. We don't know the time. And people that aren't prepared, that aren't ready for the Lord's return, that aren't believers in him, he will come like a thief in the night. And it will be too late to close your doors, to open your doors, I should say, to Christ. Colossians 3, 4. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. So I said, glorious day, we will be with him in glory. Our incorruptible, incorruptible, uh, corruptible will be incorruptible, I should say, with his glory. First John 2.28, And now, little children, abide in him, so that when he appears, we, we may have confidence and not shrink from him in shame at his coming. Do you want to have confidence knowing that the Lord is going to take you home? We will have no confidence when that day comes, not knowing him, not believing on him. We were just talking about Revelation 20 through 20. He who testifies to these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. John wanted him not to go. He wanted him to return right there. I don't want to wait, Lord. Take us home. How much longer do we have to wait, Father? 1 Thessalonians 5.23 Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I believe we read this already. That's okay. Like I said, when, when you read Scripture, when you read the Bible, you have to, you know, read over and over again to continuously learn, continue, continually find new things. We can never know everything. 
I don't care who the greatest scholar is in the Bible. You're still learning. You're still, still learning every day. Believe me. James 5, 5, 7. Be patient, therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient about it until it receives the early and the late rains. Be patient. It's something that's hard for us to do, especially when we want the Lord to return. Revelation 3.11, I am coming soon. Hold fast what you have, so that no one may seize your crown. It will be a crown of life, eternal life in heaven. What a glorious day that will be. Philippians 3.20, But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. We await. We are waiting for our Savior, Jesus Christ. Our, citizen, our citizenship is in heaven. Our true home is in heaven. Our true home isn't here. Like I said before, uh, we cannot comprehend the Lord's return. We cannot even fathom how it will be, how it will feel. We don't have the, our minds don't have the capability of even knowing or even having a thought how we will feel. I know the feeling will be like no other. It's more than joy. It's more than happiness. It's more than euphoric. It's more than, uh, um, I don't have any word that's going to describe it. Maybe it's whatever word we try to describe it, it's going to be even stronger. <sighs> First Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1.7 said you that, so that, you are not lacking in any gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. The gift is through him. The gift is eternal life. And our gifts are in heaven. And we should not be lacking. We should be believing. And those who don't believe will be lacking in gift. John 5, 28, 29. Do not marvel at this. For an hour is coming when all, are, when all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and come out. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. The good is believing him. The evil is not believing in him. We've all done good and evil in this life, so that's what that means. The evil is not believing in him. The good are those who believe in him. 1 Peter 4, 7 The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be self-controlled and sober-minded. For the sake of your prayers. Since day one, that's true. <laughs> Since day one, it's been end times. I believe that. Since day one, when Adam and Eve sinned against God, turned their back on God, it's been the end times since then. Remember, a thousand years is a day to God. So everything is happening very quickly. So Peter saying the end of all things is at hand. We've always been at the end times. But now as we continue to see the signs grow, we truly are getting closer to the Lord's return. When that is, I don't know. So keep uh, keep looking up, brothers and sisters, and those who have not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I hope that you do find them. I hope that scriptures help you find them. I hope that People through Christ can help you find him because he truly is the only way to heaven. That is the most powerful scripture. Well, all scripture is powerful, but when Jesus said that I'm the only way to the Father, that's clear cut, end of story to everything else. And he is the bread of life. Will you take him? Will you accept his body and blood? Meaning accepting him. And Jesus said, let's go to Mark, excuse me, Mark 14, 62, I jumped the gun. <laughs> and Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Glorious day when we see him up in the clouds and he comes down. Take us home, Father. We're ready. We know uh, it's on your time, but we're ready. We're ready.
Revelation 1 8, and the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord, who is and who was and who, and who is to come, the Almighty. He is now, he was then, and when he comes, he is still Almighty God. Matthew 25 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Again, glory. The glorious return of Jesus Christ. Glorious. Ah, you've been so come, Lord Jesus. First Peter 5.4 4. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. Like we said before, we will receive the crown of glory in heaven where our treasures are. First Corinthians eleven twenty six, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. You have accepted the Lord through His death and through His resurrection until He comes again. Can't wait for that day, glorious day. Again, are you ready? Are you one of His sheep? Have you heard His voice? Have you taken His body and, and blood? He is the bread of life that came down from heaven to die for us, to forgive us our sins through his death and resurrection. First Peter 4.13 But rejoice in so far as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad with his glory as re when his glory is revealed. That's what I'm saying. When when he returns, it's going to be a glorious feeling, just it's just rejoicing, and like the Bible says, that you may also rejoice and be glad, even though we're going to suffer through this world. The, the the joy that we're going to have at his glory, it's just going to be. Again, the word I'm going to use is unexplainable. Are you ready? If you're a believer, you're definitely ready to go home. A real believer, I believe, wants to go home. I've always said it. It's the believers who say, you know what, Lord, I'm good with what I got here. Hold on. Hold off. I'm okay. You don't have to come yet. Those are the people that are not believers. They are good with what they have here. And we. it's nice to have nice things, but they're temporary. You should want the Lord to return. So as we did many scriptures today, I'm glad we did. I hope uh, I hope uh, you've watched the whole video through and through. I hope you've hit the like button and the subscribe button. Um, it helps my channel grow and it helps you spread the word of the Lord as good as best as possible through this platform. And um, the likes are important, and you know the support is incredible. Without you guys, without the support, I can't. Uh, the channel goes nowhere. And um, I'm grateful for that. I just wanted to put that out there as I have in many videos. But I'm definitely grateful for the support that I've gotten here. It's been absolutely incredible. And like I said, if you enjoyed this little study that we had today, you know, hit the like button, hit the subscribe. It uh, helps the platform grow. We're waiting, Father. I'm waiting. We're all waiting. We're living in this terrible world. But we know that you love us. We know that you're in control. And we know with that, Father, we cannot lose. We cannot lose. Thank you, Lord, for giving me the strength to do this. Thank you, Lord, for my brothers and sisters. It's an honor to serve you. Sometimes I feel I'm not worthy. But I am worthy because I'm one of yours. And my job is to serve. My job is to feed your sheep, just like you told Peter. Again, thank you all for the immense support that I have gotten. Um, I'm humbled by it. I'm grateful. And I love each and every one of you. So let's get ready. Let's hold on. Because that ride is going to be a glorious one when the Lord returns. Once again, thank you for watching. 
Thank you so much for watching. May God bless your hearts, your souls, and your minds. Keep you strong in the word. Keep you strong in prayer. Give you the wisdom, the knowledge, the love to get through another day. And we cannot fail because all things are possible through Jesus Christ. God bless you all.